This one makes her. Oh, I was really fast fade. <laughs> <laughs> Want to trim me the other? <clears throat> hey, welcome to Talk It Out, Talk It Out, Talk It Out. We got Sarah back with us again. Missed you guys last weekend. Um, I was just telling Sarah when I got here this morning, I was like, I was just so lost not having that routine of, oh, yeah. of doing something. So, so it was, it's good. It was all, um, I got to help move stuff at my uncle's. Which was that looked like a challenge. Uh, like how you put that the hot mess. You got to. That um, keep your prayer life good, didn't it? Yeah, too. it was. It was hot, and but we got a lot accomplished. So, but and my hugest apologies to Jennifer Pierce. I'm the one that let her down because I said I know Fire. I said I would go going through some stuff and um, just couldn't do it, which is not a good enough excuse. It is, but that's all I got. That's good enough. I just couldn't do it. And, and honestly, she's even, I mean, she's praised us for, you know, shouting her out, and, which I did not get flowers today. Sorry, Jennifer. Um, but I was going to, and then I was going to take them to Gracie's apartment, but I didn't. So It's okay. You know, I failed. It's all right. But it's all right. There's no guilt. No. No condemnation. All is good. <clears throat> A couple of things I want to <laughs> It's that chicken business on your throat, isn't it? <laughs> Sarah, okay, fair, just, issues. we're just going to say Sarah's having some throat issues this morning, so, you know, we're going to be in prayer about that, but we, um, a couple of things I want to shout out, because I said I would do this, and I forgot to do it two weeks ago, but a couple of things I want to do mention, a couple of mentions, I'll get my big girl words out of it, <laughs> um, Jesus. this is such a trying time for so many people mm -hmm. in so many ways especially small business. Small businesses are taking an enormous hit. And people, I understand people don't have the money to eat out like they used to. Um, finances are tight. Go to grocery stores like they used to. Uh, yeah, to. put gas in your car like you used to. <laughs> Keep the lights on like you used to. Um, you know, thank heaven for rain barrels. Um, but sincerely, I mean, this is a really difficult time for people. And... Um, when you think about times are already hard for people and then those people who make their living in a small business, their small businesses are crashing and it's they are having to try to run a business and a household on the income from the small business that no one else can afford to keep going. So I am going to say two huge things for two places that I've been in the last couple of weeks that just were above and beyond amazing and that I know um, need uh, some support. The first one is Urban Legends Barbecue in Energy. Um, mm -hmm. Carl Desantine is the mm -hmm. owner and the smoker there, and he is phenomenal. Not smoker, I mean, he may be. Right, I don't know what he does. <laughs> time, but I know that he throws... Smoke meat? Yeah, he throws the meat in there. They have meatloaf. They have, I think their special is going to be smoked chickens this weekend. Um, we did the chicken egg roll after our last oh, show with yeah. Sarah, and it was delicious. I did the brisket egg roll. That's my favorite. That's my favorite. Like I don't even like brisket, and those are amazing. Like and, and that's the energy, energy staff too. And yeah, whatever. I don't know what the address. Nice. It's have. energy. I don't know what the address is, but if you, a lot of people have a hard time finding it, and I think that's part of the problem. But if you're going south, which means like down towards thirteen on one forty eight on one forty eight, it's going to be on the right hand side. And there's like a tire place that runs perpendicular to the street. And then Urban Legend sits back kind of off to the right a little bit. It's, it, it butts up to the back of the little, the little Heron Lake thing. Yes. Mm -hmm. So please go see Carl and his staff. They're amazing. If you need anything catered, I've had them cater things before. They're amazing. Um, tons of meat on their sandwiches. Don't give me no skimpy barbecue. 
and they know how to load it up. <laughs> yes. And the squatch eggs there are amazing. They're like this barbecue and bacon and stuff and all wrapped up in sausage and deep fried and yum. Very healthy. Yeah, super healthy. Still waiting to try those. <laughs> Makes you strong in your haunches. But <laughs> You're on your trip. Yeah. But so check check them out. Check out Carl. Um, go to Facebook and find Urban Legend Barbecue. There's a Sasquatch that stands out by the road, so you'd be able to find it. That people are having trouble finding the Sasquatch. Sasquatch. I know, like you look past it. Even it is funny. The second one is everybody is in mourning over the closing of um, Dairy Queen in Carterville, um, but never fear. Mr. Charlie Stevens still has it going on over at the Country Covered. Now, Country Covered did some difficult times during COVID and after COVID, had some trouble with staff, yada, yada. Um, I think Mr. Stevens is pouring his heart out to Country Covered and keeping it going, small town uh, cafe. We've been there the last two or three Sundays. I don't remember how many in a row. And then I've been there for a lunch or sorry, a yeah, it was a lunch on a Saturday. Um, their food is phenomenal. They've got a lady named Melissa. She, I think she's also called Missy, that is managing it. That has been there for a couple months. They've got new kitchen staff. Nice. Best chicken on Never Sundays. Been there. You've got to go to Country Cover. I will. My grandson Let's used to go call after it. this. Are they open? Yes, they're open every day till <laughs> seven o'clock, and they close at three on Sunday. Three on the mind. Yeah, but it's Always. really good. So go check them out if you kind of. And I will say that it's. Um, I know for a while their prices were kind of high, but I'm pretty sure that we had three meals, two pies, some coffee, and we all had the drinks, and it was less than forty dollars for all of that. So yeah, two pies or two pieces. Two pieces of pie. Okay. Yeah, but they're big, you know, mile high, mile high to the sky room. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, they were, it was super good. Check them out. So I told them that I would give them a shout out and. Uh, country cupboards open until seven every night, and they close at three on Sunday. Um, cash or check only for country Can I cupboard. buy a pie there? Probably. Like to take probably to a reunion that you have to go to today, tomorrow. Yeah, probably because I sure can guarantee it's going to be better than anything <laughs> I bake. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so while we've done shout outs for our local businesses or close in the area, if you guys have any, no matter where you're at, right? Um, we've got people. All over the place. So shout out local businesses. Uh, put it in the comments. Um, tag them. Whatever. Yes. Because we want to recognize those people and continue to support for sure. Absolutely. So definitely. But while we're sitting here in this small business. Yep. Yeah. Stern Sales. Stern Sales. Yeah. So it's a little chilly today. So. Yeah. So yeah. There you go. <laughs> well, we should probably start off with prayer to be able to help you in your throat. <laughs> I <think> so. so <laughs> <laughs> so we just think, you know, I grabbed her throat as soon as I came in. I just poked her in the throat. Her throat. I did. We gotta, we gotta prepare her for. I poked her in the throat, and I said, "I'm." I said, and then after I prayed for her throat, I said, "I'm sorry. I just grabbed a chicken egg mm. that dropped straight out of the chute and hadn't washed my hands yet. So now you have chicken business you know, on your. You don't larynx. know me that well, but I really have an issue with eggs coming out of different regions. <laughs> That are not washed. <laughs> she dirtied my larynx. Okay, hey, I'm gonna let you do that. But okay, okay. Let's yes, lay some hands on her. <laughs> <laughs> We're being funny, but in all sincerity, dear Heavenly Father, I pray that you just touch Sarah this morning. She is here to share her testimony with us, and Lord knows we all need it. I pray that you touch her throat and that you give her strength to push those words out because we need to hear them. Lord, I pray that you just. Um, help her and continue to develop her ministry. Let her be a blessing as she is to everyone that she meets. In Jesus' name I pray and help Cassie's hands who are cold and rigid God bless at this her. point. Jesus, God name. bless her tiny hands. Amen. In Jesus' name. <laughs> That's so sweet. You're so pretty. <laughs> okay. Where's one of those tiny tissues? I don't know if you said if this is your first oh time gosh. tuning in, we're mildly irreverent. Welcome. With absolute God knows what we know in our heart and what we will have in our heart. And I do mm. or 
Yeah, her throat is touched, whether we touch her with plastic hands or not. <laughs> but we have an absolute... The prayer is real. The prayer it's is the real. Truth. But we have a complete and total obsession with tiny hands in this place. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Tiny hands are the best. They are the best. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, you'll have to put this on and do your... Oh, booty! <laughs> 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 tell you that the very first time that I actually tried to mock her voice and it came out basically like her voice. <laughs> I was absolutely I was like, oh, I am Kristen Wiig, only poor. Help me, I'm poor. <laughs> you do nail her voice very well in everything that you do. Only so on true. Denise, basically. That's hilarious. Except for... Dominique can do Target, though. Yeah, Dominique's. she can. Bitch, you're good, I'm girl. <laughs> Bitch, I'm <all> girl. <laughs> Funny. All right, it's funny. All yeah. seriousness. Yes. Let's get Putting my hands down. Yeah. Down so, the last time we had you here, we talked about several things because we are a box full of shiny balls when you're here. <laughs> and that's okay. And it was great. And we had a good time. And we're super glad to have you back. We're missing Michelle right now because she went live on location to somewhere else. Church um, of Marion. Church of Marion. I already forgot what it was. I don't know. See our page. She was like, <laughs> See our page. Yeah, she was on there live an hour ago. They're doing a clothing drive or something. Yeah, something. Free clothes. Back to school she clothing said there's thing. A ton of stuff that they had available. Shoes, clothes, whatever. Yeah. So then there's a free fit. Free. All free. Then there's uh, Wani's Warriors who has <laughs> it's W A N I short for Wanda. Her nickname was Wani. Wani's Warriors is um, they do different things all during the year. For to collect money. Their mother's name was Wanda, and she passed away a few years ago. Um, but she was amazing. To She had many times of struggles in her life, but she was awesome to give back to people. And so they created a 501c3 um, called Wani's Warriors. Mm -hmm. And right now they're doing a shoe and sock drive for back to school for kids. So they collected over 300 pairs of wow, shoes awesome. to give away yeah so they've given a bunch of them away but they still have like i don't know how many they have left today nice. but after their big event i think they still had about 100 shoes left had their pairs of shoes left wow. so um <coughs> find wani's warriors on facebook or ask us where it's at and we'll try to tag that later yeah, tag Wani's warriors for that and that's jennifer and valerie reed in west frankfurt um, <laughs> and then yeah, write that down you said the word wani's what Warriors. Warriors. Warrior. It's the word of the day. That's the word oh, of the day. Oh, look at that. Is that the word you were chasing? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Was it chasing me? Yep. It was chasing you. It's chasing me. So, and then um, you were talking about a benefit for um, Jason and Jana Lentz. For the Lentz family. Yeah. Um, I sent you the information. It's in September. Help a gal out. So I'm I sent it to you. <laughs> On my phone, it'll be on Facebook. Oh, but where did you see it? Well, <laughs> yeah. I'm wondering what I'm doing. Like Answering that. email and exactly. checking my calendar. And exactly. It is. So, for those of you who don't know, um, Jason and his um, ex wife Jennifer had a daughter named Taylor. And Taylor um, passed away from Ewing sarcoma at the age of 24, about five it's been almost maybe it's been six years maybe six years ago five or six years ago and then jason was remarried to Jana, and they had hayden and hayden was uh, tragically killed in a car accident so they've lost all their children teenager teenagers yeah he was a teenager, was a teenager. Yeah. um and so they are having a benefit for their family. Um, it's the Hayden Lentz first annual bags tournament, September the 14th at 2 p.m. at Just Add Water, which is down at Lake of Egypt. Lake of Egypt. Um, they um, are having, the neck of the woods. Uh, let's see, Matt Bosler is playing music at 7 p.m. The entry fee is $20 per person. Um, they're gonna do random draws for teams, which sounds fun. There is a, I can't see this with my glasses on. Um, there's all kinds of things <laughs> about, <weird>. yeah, <laughs> I know. And I, I put my, off, well, so I and then I put my glasses on and go, let me put my glasses on so I can hear you. Because if I can't see your face, I can't pay attention to what you're saying. <laughs> then they also are having raffles, a silent auction, a 50-50 drawing, um, $20 pre-orders, 
for a side of ribs and seven dollar yes. barbecue plates. Yes, more so, barbecue. Yeah. So um, we will barbecue. also get in touch with uh, people there. There, <clears throat> yeah. Sarah's going to be selling some laugh like Adrian shirts. Yeah. And she um, is also collecting money to give them as a donation. So we'll tag Sarah Wiley. And as I'm we're already done, but um, send her a message if you'd like to donate some money Please. to this family. And um, we'll keep you apprised of what's going on and keep reminding you of the benefits so you can get out and support the Lentz family during that time. Perfect. Anything else right. you want to add to that, my friend? I don't think so. Um, the Laugh Like Adrian um, shirts, uh, they... I don't know where we're going with this, but she's the reason I started with the comedy thing, clean comedy thing. I only do clean comedy. Um, she's the reason I started, did my first open mic stand up, which I, everybody says, were you nervous? Um, no, I mean, I was nervous, but I got up there and it's like, it just this is where I belong. <laughs> yep. Now, the second time I did an open mic, when my button on my jeans flew off <laughs> literally like three minutes before they called my name that was a little bit more nerve-wracking <laughs> i said you started off with well i came like up pick. here my button just played i did and it totally <laughs> i mean it just started <laughs> yeah I'm talking about trying to gain that equilibrium like <laughs> yeah, okay start my whole whole trying to yeah <laughs> don't people mind me offering my dear sweet friend ashley i love you ashley i hope you're watching She's one of my uh, friends I consider family. She offered me her pants. <laughs> and so, of course, well, she's sure I am, well, yes, I'm taller than <laughs> everyone, it seems. <laughs> but she offered me her pants. And so, you know, literally, I'm sitting there like, what size are they? You know, like a chicken. <laughs> no, I'll be fine. I think, I think, I have a belt. And the belt was like cinched. There was no chance I was going to lose my pants. But at the same time, I didn't think I was going to lose my butt. Either. Yeah, no joke. Anything can happen. Anything. She's like time. telling me the size and everything. And I'm like, they're getting ready. I'm next on the list. They're getting ready to call my name. Don't and mind her. Was, she's ch she's wearing her friend's pants right now. I, like, what would be worse? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Ashley. <laughs> the best. For being that right. friend. Those, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so, back to, come back, ADHD. The um, the Laugh Like Adrian shirts, um, I would love to sell those, all the profits um, and proceeds and all those PRO words are going to go toward the Lentz family um, with this sale. I'll be doing comedy this Friday the 16th, I believe, Yes. at Integrity Healthcare, and um, it's going to be a good, good time. Yeah. And... Where? In Heron? Um, it's one? in Marion. Marion? Marion. Marion Integrity. You got it. And um, it'll be in the morning. It'll be at 10 o'clock, so it's a little, little bit um, different, but it's going to be a good, good time. On Saturday? Uh, Friday. 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 10 o'clock. Come on, Jen. Friday. I know. It's <laughs> eliciting. Do you not have your earbuds in? Uh, if I had them in, I probably could show it. <laughs> <laughs> she don't got her earbuds in. She don't got she her earbuds don't in. got her earbuds in. So the last time we had you on, we talked about lots of things and had lots of fun and stuff. And then Michelle even said, and it's true, we didn't have time to even really get into your testimony. So we have you back today. <laughs> testimony. So we're going to go down that rabbit hole today. Sweet. And first of all, though, you said there was a word following you today. So there is a word let's following start with me that today. Because the fact that, because she said it too is. Yes, warrior. Warrior is following me. Um, and wow. I, where, where do I go? God. Um, Joel. So. I was laughing because Joel, um, do you know anything about Joel? What do you know about Joel? Not too much about Joel. Nobody really talks about Joel. Exactly. Do you know anything mm -hmm. about Joel? No. Um, he was a prophet and somebody, God bless my dear sweet cousin, Angela. Um, I was just kind of testing the waters. What does everybody remember about Joel this morning? No. 
this hasn't been a huge survey or anything, <laughs> but uh, she lets me know that um, Joel, what did she say? It was something about a canker worm. Canker worm. Mm -hmm. I don't know what that is. Do you know what that is? Canker Old school? worm? A worm was a canker sore. I'm going to guess it's like a bot it fly. It brings a whole lot of images to mind. I yeah. know that. <laughs> she says, he will restore the years that the canker worm has stolen. He did for me. That's what she tells me about Joel the prophet. Thank you, Miss Angela. I can't wait to see you tomorrow. Um, so, I get to... It's the tiny hands prayer. <laughs> Might not be as effective. If I were no, you. Worse. <laughs> I touched you with my chicken finger. You are. Know, I'm <laughs> telling you, there's some kind of bacteria now. <laughs> chicken butt bacteria <laughs> um so i turn i'm a big fan of saying okay god i know you have something for me i know um i know my brain does not automatically calm down and boy it doesn't it does not we've tried the supplements we've tried less coffee we've tried decaf don't do that ever <laughs> those are lies oh it's all lies <laughs> yeah i'm so immune to all kinds of things now it's like whatever yeah so this morning i was everywhere just everywhere even more so than usual and the bait of um, satan oh right and i had been on steroids as well to help the throat all the inflamed regions and so um that makes me a little bit crazy and hungry oh, very, yeah. very hungry snacks i need snacks they also the make time. me angry so i always say if i'm on steroids i'm up half the night i can hit somebody with my car and eat tires and <laughs> yeah. All <along>. yeah. <laughs> sorry that's it's not so going to help true. with the focus but that's so just true that's what steroids do it has towel has tires yeah maybe towers <laughs> tires so thank you greg <laughs> Shout out small businesses. Let yeah. me tell you, Greg is one of the reasons I'm here today because he fixed my Volkswagen. Greg's Greg's my stepdad. He's, He's amazing. Amazing. Yeah. Um, yeah. So he changed out my tires. I'm I'm now high tech. I'm jacked up now. It's <laughs> amazing. Just the back. <laughs> Do you go like ins, 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 <laughs> rolling down the road? So <laughs> Joel and canker worms, sorry. <laughs> I can't even tell you what I've been listening to. So I finally figured out anytime I hear talk it out or see the shirt, I hear walk it out in my head. Walk it out, walk it out, walk, walk it, it out. out, walk it out, walk yeah. it out. So I've got the clean version playing this morning to try and get it out of my head. No, it didn't get out of my head. So I'm getting ready. Again, this is part of my everywhere. I'm getting ready. The kids get up. I'm in there jamming to walk it out, and then afterwards, Laffy Taffy. <laughs> <laughs> and your yeah, kids are like, what is right. that? <laughs> mom? And yeah, God bless my kids. <laughs> my daughter, you know, she's a girl, but my son is very much, <laughs> oh man, <laughs> it's true. Not everyone can say that. We knew that right off. <laughs> We're not gonna go. <laughs> <laughs> we digress. Oh. We digress. <laughs> <laughs> Joel and canker worms. Joel and well, let's not let's not tag it back to that because I still don't know what a canker worm. Oh, is. okay. You were asking. Okay. I was a I legitimately asking. Oh, well, let's see. Okay. That wasn't like a preacher kind of ask. Oh, okay. <laughs> that was like a, I really don't know what a canker worm is. But if it's like a tomato worm, gross. Those are nasty. Those green things. Ew, with the horns. Yeah. So while you're looking that up. I'll read what I turn to because when my brain is as scattered as it is, I give myself grace. There's no guilt. There's no condemnation. I open my Bible up and it has, I keep this clip. I keep thinking I'm going to clip my hair back that the heat might hit anytime. <laughs> so I open my Bible and I'm like, Joel, why? What could be in Joel? I don't know about anything about Joel. I need something like your healed lady. <laughs> yeah. Pull up your bootstraps and your bra straps and get to Heron, right? Just do it. Energy. Your voice Energy. is going to be there. Energy. I'm so sorry. It's okay. Rude. It's so strange. It, it is strange. 
<laughs> so I made it to energy with energy. Awesome. <laughs> wow. I, I'd scream, but I can't. <laughs> Not yet. Maybe okay. it's a canker worm. Canker worms, oddly enough, are a moth. And apparently there are spring canker worms and fall canker worms. But the spring, it's from the family of Geometridae. I don't know. We don't need to go that far. Okay. What in the world are you doing to me here? <laughs> well, in, in case the... <laughs> Do you realize how off track it is? Geometro, that's... This, that's so a car. It is My like a little had a nice <laughs> cheap car. Yeah. Tiny. Hugo or something. They don't even have those anymore. They don't. Yeah. They didn't last long. So the larvae feed on deciduous trees and shrubs, and they can completely defoliate and kill a tree. The worms often fall from the canopy onto passersby. Usually they're suspended by a line of silk that they can climb back into the tree along should a spring wind dislodge them from their meal of leaves. <laughs> now, it doesn't say specifically what they do to humans, but I wouldn't spring think... Wind. Huh? Spring wind. Yeah, <laughs> spring wind. So, um, I don't know exactly what they do to humans, but it doesn't sound good. And I'm wondering if it's like a bot fly, like, you know. You're talking about this bot fly, like I know what that is. A bot fly is a larva thing that will fall into you and burrow into your skin. And then they get all swollen and weird, and it blows bubbles out this hole that it causes, and they're enormous. And you have to go to the doctor, and you can push, unless you're accustomed to doing this, you have to push down on all of the swollen part. Until it peeps its head out, and then you have to grab it with tweezers and have it out. Jesus have giant. mercy. Yeah, I so. Free. So, I don't know what a canker worm is, but if it's anything like a bot fly, years have been stolen from my oh, life Lord. just knowing about them. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, okay, Joel. So, his... okay, so these weird worms, they have taken things from Joel, Right. Um, and so I opened my Bible and it says, uh, I'm in Joel three, eight. So it says, I will sell your sons and daughters into the hand of the people of Judah and they will sell them to the Sabaeans, to a nation far away for the Lord has spoken. Proclaim this among the nations consecrate for war stir up the mighty men let all the men of war draw near let them come up beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears let the weak say i am a warrior so it immediately took me to is that the same verse as let the weak say i am strong Remember that old yeah. song? Mm -hmm. I'm not going to sing it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Small favors. <laughs> Look how big. It is. It's Look at that. Little things and big things. Okay, so um, let the weak say I am strong. I remember my mom listening to this song when she was sick. Um, bedridden, in fact, when I was a kid. And... She um, had a, a little uh, statue of Goliath laying down and David with a sword and just standing over him. And we would play with that sword because it came off and all of this <laughs> and just loved it. So when it comes to um, this, I was like, "What? what is this? I don't even understand what you're trying to say other than... Let the weak say I'm strong. You know, nobody wants to be weak. My gosh, I've been weak all week. Hmm. And I can't, and I've been so sick and tired of being so sick and tired. Yeah. And so um, a little tiny backstory without going down any kind of, of mole hole. I think those are bigger than rabbit holes. That's why I use that. Because my little man, I can go, we go. Yeah. So I have um, autoimmune issues um, as well as neuromuscular, neurological issues that I deal with. And 
So a lot of times if I get a virus of any kind, then it, it's not just a cold. It wipes me out. It, there's no such thing as just a cold in my house, unfortunately. And I honestly think a lot of people are like that post COVID. Yeah. I really do. Yeah, I we're think, immunosuppressed is why. You got it. Yeah. So, um, I literally just had the same illness the week before when I came on the last time, Mm -hmm. right? (laughs) So I get down again um, Monday, knowing full well that I'm going to be here. Be here on Saturday. You got it. (laughs) Real clever, devil. (laughs) Yeah, we did this one already. Right. Yeah. (laughs) Played this game. So, um, I've got this. I got. I'm gonna go ahead and dot some snot here. Yeah, <laughs> dot some snot. That's a hashtag. <laughs> <laughs> dot some snot. So, um, when I deal with this, come back around. Just give me a second. Tiny hands. Just give me a second. <laughs> when I deal with this. Um, I think I said in the last podcast, it's not always sunshine and rainbows. We're not, we're not praising through it. We're not singing hallelujah anyway. We're on the couch and we're not even asking for prayer because by God, just leave me alone. Right. Yeah. You know, <laughs> leave me alone. I don't want anybody asking me how I am. I don't want anybody talking about me. I don't want to see somebody out and be like, mm, yeah. <laughs> yeah. How are you? You doing okay? <laughs> And heaven forbid somebody says, Gosh, you look tired. Yeah. (laughs) You look tired to me. I'm like, Okay. Thanks. My mom, that's another thing about sick and tired. She said, You never tell anybody they look sick or tired. (laughs) Yeah. Ever. Ever. Don't do that. Don't do that. You might as well say you look like crap. She is. She's one of the wisest women I know. It's true. Um, because if you catch me in the right mood, I'm going to say, well, you look ugly and at least I can fix this. And it's yeah. going to cost thousands for you. Exactly. Okay? Thousands. <laughs> there ain't no good. Well, I don't know that there aren't any good doctors down here that can do the work that some of these people need, but I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> moving on. I told you I was on steroids, right? <laughs> so, um, Yeah. And there's so much going on. Like you said, um, I've had a friend contact me. Her sister passed away, left behind five kids. Oh, my gosh. Um, And literally was put on hospice um, a few months, like not even a few months into the battle. She's gone, gone, 43 years old. My word. Um, uh, Some uh, people need prayer. Mm -hmm. Everybody's dealing with something. And. I feel like it comes in, in these waves sometimes, almost like, um, you can keep on trucking, but at the same time, like, and I don't know if everybody is like this, but I am a very, um, compassionate person. I hospitality, I, I want everybody to be comfortable. Absolutely. I will do anything to make somebody comfortable. Um, and my mom, she's the same way. I always said she, she's not going to give you the shirt off her back. She's going to learn to crochet <laughs> and, you know, and then she, you a shirt. make you a shirt yeah. and a matching sweater and then give it to you and, and then cook you dinner. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but when it comes to the, um, gosh, just, it can be overwhelming and, Um, I really get to this point where it's like, okay, I, I need to back out. I need to get away from social media. Um, and, and other times, um, earlier in the week, I'm like, I need some prayer. Let's, and a lot of times if I ask for prayer for myself then I'm like, all right, we're going to fight. We are going to fight. And so a lot of times that's when I'll post, Hey, who needs prayer? tell me. And I literally get to the point where I say, all right, let's, let's do this. And that's what this scripture is saying. Joel three, nine and 10. 
let the weak say, I am a warrior. I'm sorry, I just read the wrong one. It says, consecrate for war. Stir up the mighty woe men. Amen. Let all the women of war draw near. Let them come up. Beat your plowshares into swords, your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am a warrior. Now, we're not talking about plowshares or pruning what was it? Forks, hooks. We're talking about using what we have. Yes. We don't have the tools at our disposal a lot of times. If I'm on the couch, I am so exhausted. I cannot move. Literally parts of my body will be paralyzed. Um, they called it periodic paralysis. Um, and I can literally be using a cane one day and the next day I'm running circles. I am. Yes. I'm at the, <laughs> I'm at the hub or I'm at the rise down at Anna. I'm it's amazing to me how you have to balance that out. Um, and I know a lot of people are the same way because you can push, 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 push yourself until you crash. Yeah. And that push crash syndrome is where I was at for years. Um, I've been dealing with symptoms of all of this since I graduated. Um, uh, I graduated in 07. I've been dealing with symptoms since about 2008 or 2009. And um, so for me to say, uh, let the weak say I am strong, I have really, really struggled with saying I am weak. Right. I, I am not weak. I, that's the last thing, you know, I'm strong. God, I'm strong. Yeah. I, you said I'm strong. I'm not weak. Why would I have to say that? Um, I've, I've worked, I've worked for this yeah. bicep, Ooh, right? Yeah. I've worked for this. Um, <clears throat> and I'm getting back to it, but it's that very fine line of pushing myself but not pushing to the point where I pass that line to where I'm down for a week yeah. and everything gets canceled. So God has really taught me that um, there's a time to fight. There's a time to rest. There, whew, feel that. There's a time for, um, there's a time for dancing. Shout out Kevin Bacon mm -hmm. and David. <laughs> And the quote unquote new Footloose that I just watched that's not new anymore. It's from 2013 or something. Oh, really? 2011. See, I'm so behind the movies. Too. I am too. I'm not a big movie watcher, but, <laughs> um, but that is one of my favorite movies. So, um, but there's a time for everything. And um, hashtag, it's time to laugh. Yeah. It's time to laugh. And one of the things that I do is good like a medicine. You got it a merry heart. And, uh, that's one of the things I was telling Cassie was, um, when I lost my voice for six months, which I found out was, um, also possibly due to the neurological disorder, um, could be Hashimoto's, could be the thyroid swelling up, or it could be COVID could be the devil. I don't care. Yeah what you call it definitely the devil right i don't care what you call it i don't need i don't need the name but i used it um to help educate another speech therapist um and she uh would come up with the exercises and i hated doing them just like any of my <laughs> any of my speech therapy patients uh, but one of them was uh oh <laughs> uh oh and I was laughing because I would I would walk around the house going uh oh and woman it gets everybody's attention. Just yeah, like, what? Like, what happened? Yeah. Oh, and so I started going uh oh uh oh devil uh oh uh oh devil uh oh devil. Somebody's voice is coming back. That's mine. So, um, when you have those moments of just. I cannot do this anymore. And I have been down the road 
of the darkest places. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I think it's more accepted and more known these days that people, um, with a sense of humor, a lot of times they're masking so much. Absolutely. And that's how you deal with things. But it's not allowed to have a sense of humor anymore. Well, and it's not, it's everyone, you know, everyone is going to get butt hurt. So if you, (laughs) you're welcome. Hashtag butt hurt. hurt. (laughs) So, you know, just everybody's offended. Everyone's offended. You can't have fun. You can't make jokes. Um, And it does, you know, it's, it really does oppress those with a sense of humor, which I'm finding is so much less. (laughs) 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 There we go. (laughs) Try opening it. But for the love, like, you know, we can be silly and, and there's no reason. I mean, where did we get a sense of humor? God gave it to us. Absolutely. God had a sense of humor. He's had me be married twice. So he was like, watch this. (laughs) (laughs) Just to let you know, God didn't have anything to do with either of those marriages. I'm pretty sure. Let's try the other way. You may want the other side. That's fine. Did you break that thumb off my <laughs> stupid tiny hands? You a mess, Cassie. Yes, you can. <laughs> That's so funny. So, so yeah, it's. I mean, you're. It, it's. I like it when you read this. When you read, I'm just kind of jumping somewhere because I had something in my head and I didn't want to forget. Away from you. So the um, when you were talking about in that. He's a big word. They're coming. The words are coming. When, in the scripture, <laughs> there it is. Boom. In the scripture, when I was talking about, you know, I'm just picturing in my head because everything's a little movie, busting up your tools, the tools that you do everyday work with that are valuable to you. Those are not the same tools that, say, a pastor has or that um, a, a televangelist has or, you know, a super famous podcaster. <laughs> That <laughs> we don't, we are not all equipped with the same tools. We are not all mm-hmm. blessed with the same things to use, but that doesn't mean that we can't use what we have. So even if it looks like it's, you know, even if you think that there's something that you have that is useless in God's world, nothing is wasted in, in, mm-hmm. with God. Everything that He's given is used. So even <clears throat> if you have, a raspy voice that they want to label however they want to label it. It's not wasted. Your struggle with it isn't wasted. You, it's given you a complete insight into your patients who you then give a voice to. So every struggle and every battle that we go through, that pain and struggle is not wasted. So the fact that they've had to destroy their tools to become warriors, it just changes what looks like a mundane tool and they've had to in the physical sense destroy it but so that it can be used for a greater good that's awesome man way to go god that'll preach and it is it's so true um that god says okay joel whatever it was, this, this illness, this dis-ease in my body, this sickness, I would gladly get rid of it. Bye. Bye. (laughs) Um, (laughs) but, and I thought, God, why am I not healed? You know, like, and every time it would be like, okay, I'm doing this now. I'm eating, I'm eating these veggies and I'm drinking this much water and I'm doing this, I'm doing this and I'm doing this and I'm getting, I can, I'm going back to work in 40 hours a week. Awesome. 
Guess what got left out? My Bible. Mm -hmm. I didn't, I wasn't looking in here for what I needed to be saying. Let the weak say I am a warrior and I am weak. And the very, um, gosh, one of the biggest life lessons that I was taught growing up was to be self-sufficient. Self-sufficient. I mean, I'm surprised that I don't change my own oil to this day. Like, I I was going to prove to everybody I can do anything. I don't need anybody's help. I don't need your help. I don't need, <laughs> I don't need what you're telling me. Yeah. I don't need... No, I don't need any of that. I'm independent, man or woman. And and especially if you've been in these relationships, God, we can't go there, but <laughs> I've been in these relationships where you're like, I'm, gosh, with these quote unquote men yeah. who aren't really men. Um, no, like God wants us to be dependent on him and right. man that bothered me so badly Cassie <laughs> give me anything else God I don't want to be weak I don't want to be a sheep either right. oh my gosh yeah I've seen sheep sheep are stupid God, that's why so God stupid. refers to us as his sheep and he's the shepherd we had sheep marriage number one we had sheep they are so dumb they will literally and I thought man we, he just thinks that it's she, you know, people read it and go like, oh, shepherd takes care of the sheep. That's what that's all about. It's not about that. It's about the fact that sheep are ignorant. They will find the tiniest hole in a fence. <laughs> they, like you think, how did that sheep get out that hole? Well, not only did that sheep get out the hole, but all the other sheep follow all that sheep <laughs> out the hole. And then they walk around on the outside of the fence, can't figure out yeah. how they're on the outside, right. and have no idea where the hole is. Like, and you think about that on a spiritual, yeah, oh, <laughs> like on a spiritual really perspective. Big time vocal right here. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh. Yeah. So you think about that from a spiritual perspective. These sheep, what it takes one to find this tiny little hole, and it takes that one sheep to stick his head out and then underneath all that fluff, they're not really that big. No. And so that while they look like they've, they're big enough to handle staying oh, in the fence, that's good. they're not They're underneath. They are weak underneath. Yeah. They are small, no. which is why they stay in packs because they can't, they're not big enough to protect themselves. Right. If they fall on their back, the sheep cannot get up. The shepherd has to go stand it up. <laughs> Videos. I know it's hilarious. And there's like videos. Ah. Yes. <laughs> Google falling sheep or fainting goats. Oh, yes. Goats yes. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, I love fainting goats. Um, but the but like a sheep. So this one little sheep would find its way out this hole, and it would pollute, for lack of a better word, the whole entire group that would go out this tiny hole, which would then cause me to, yeah. you know, the shepherd, small s. At, well, actually, the the ex husband would go find the hole and have to fit it the is. hole. But then you, yeah. <laughs> oh, I can't even do it. Ah, that's funny. <laughs> that's a hoot. <laughs> Don't go too southern on yeah, that. Yeah, that's yes. exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to think about that forever. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> the hair clip. Yeah. Yeah. These, these so studio yeah. lights get really hot. <laughs> yeah. That's what I told Bobby in makeup. I was just like, this is a good stay. <laughs> yes. Please put the extra Jeffree Star makeup and hair mm -hmm. spray on. Yeah. They did so good. I'm so sorry. Makeup and hair. <laughs> Bobby and Tristan. I'm sorry, my hair's gonna have a kink now. <laughs> so it was it was so terrible though, because he would have to go out. So what was weird is when he tried to get them back in the fence, they'll find the hole and go out the hole, but they don't really want to follow someone and come back in the fence. Right. You have to scoot them from behind. You have to push them to get back to where they need to be. 
Is very it chicken nice. like? It's no, pretty. you're good. My grandpa used to call that my rooster hair. Mm-hmm. But so when you, you know, the sheep oh, go out. Barnyard theme. It is a barnyard <laughs> theme today. <laughs> so <laughs> you can go, you, you know, these little sheep will go out this teeny tiny hole gladly. How many times have you said that? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm trying to stick with my thought so I don't lose it. But when you put them, when you put, when you try to put them back in the gate, they don't want to go back in the gate to the place where they need to be. No. You have to nudge herd them up. and herd them along and push them to go back to where they need to be. So how often do we go out something that which should have been, it should have been a difficult oh, choice boy. for us to make and we don't know. Yeah. And it's so easy for us to make that choice to get out of what protects us. And then when God tries to bring us back, he has to do it the hard way and herd us oh, back Lord. into where we need to be. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so God uses, here's my notes that I wrote this morning. God uses physical suffering to get our attention, yeah. mm -hmm. which is very um, debatable. I feel like that's a hot kind of button issue um, because that's what a lot of unbelievers say. You know, yeah. God's... God made this happen. God made it happen. God let it happen. Um hello, God did it, that kind of thing. So, yeah, there's no doubt in my mind, just like when Jesus roamed the earth for 40 days, like, he's hungry, he's all of this, and he's like, oh, wouldn't it be nice if you just cast yourself down? Those angels won't even let you stub your toe, you know? Like, right. And the devil's all of these temptations and it's like okay god used that to show us jesus didn't need a lesson <laughs> in physical suffering <laughs> but he has definitely i can stand here or sit here and say in the un uncomfortable chair by the way <laughs> right with no tell me roll with our guests <laughs> i feel like I can sit here and say that, yes, God allows my suffering wholeheartedly believe that because um, if I don't, I'm that sheep going Meh, down in any hole trying to get out of whatever is good for me. Hello, I need that fence. I need those parameters. Mm -hmm. So um, when it comes to him allowing what has happened put me down as, yep, I believe that. Yeah. And he'll allow it over and over and over. And I can march around the walls as many times. And sometimes those are going to fall and God can put them right back up again if he wants to. Yeah. So I am a firm believer in God's going to do what he wants to do, but man, it's a fun, fun ride. If you allow it, yeah. if you finally surrender and that's another, ugh, buzzword <laughs> to surrender and use all that self-discipline I don't like that Ugh, me neither not very everything in me goes ew discipline gross <laughs> and, <Yeah>. but stupid <laughs> right rude <laughs> but one of the things was um, that we need to turn our hearts to God or uh, hold on come back squirrel God uses physical suffering to get our attention, and it can do one of two things, which I thought was really interesting. And this is from Crosswalk, um, an online site. We can either turn our hearts to God or let that suffering blind us from the truth, leading us down an even darker path. Yeah. And so I've known people who say, oh, this is what you did to me. I'll show you what I can do to me. Right. Like, you, that, you know, if you think this, I'll show you. If you think um, I'm a witch, I'll show you witchcraft. <laughs> I'll go, ooh, I went there. <clears throat> Did another one that wasn't planning on. You think I'm a witch? I'll show you witch. All based on what other people may have said. But a lot of times it's what we think they've said. Right. 
or we think not even that we think they might be thinking. Right. Right. We did a whole thing on perceptions. Yeah. yeah. Perceptions right. are killers. And one of my favorite things, I talked to a counselor once and Hi, she says, <laughs> she says <laughs> the counselor is sitting there and I was, um, I was in one of my very dark places and just belligerent, just like, so what are we doing now? What are we doing here? She goes, Sarah, what am I thinking right now? And I said, you're thinking how I am messed up, how I shouldn't be doing this and how I should be over this by now and just gave her this list. And she goes, I was thinking about the clock on the wall and how it needs a new battery. And that, thank you. I don't remember your name. I was very messed up back then. <laughs> but I went, huh. you're right. She wasn't thinking any of those things. Right. Any of that. That was all Just me. what you assumed. That was yeah. all my perception. Yeah. Right. And so, and it wasn't that she didn't care. It wasn't that she wasn't listening to me, although I kind of doubt she was because I was, she's, <laughs> That's why she was thinking about the battery. Mm. She's like, I'm going to do something to occupy my time. Like when oh. Officer Harry, the mental health dog, smells me and walks away and goes, I can't. It's too much. <laughs> oh, <that's not> Gary. <laughs> Shout out to Gary. Yeah. I love you, Gary. It's been way too long um, <laughs> since I scratched your furry little head. Um, but we don't know what other people are thinking. And so for that to determine our, our course of action, <laughs> for that to send us down this road of, well, I'm gonna do what I want. I'm gonna do whatever. And I've been there, my gosh, I've been there so many times. In fact, I was partially there last week because I'm like, if I want a candy bar, by God, I'm gonna eat a candy bar. And I might even get the big one. And I might have three of them. In size, yeah. Shareable, but yes. I ain't sharing. I ain't sharing with <laughs> anybody. In fact, I hid them in the vegetable <laughs> drawer. Oh, crap. Because I'm like, they're not watching. They're not watching, are you? You always put them in the freezer in the empty bag of peas because you know ain't nobody in your house going to open the bag of peas. Oh, let me some peas. I I'm all like... in that business. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But you know, if you want to think about suffering and what God allows, a lot of people don't realize this. When the Israelites wandered in the desert for 40 years, 40 years. Do you know their trip from Israel to the promised land was 12 miles? Right. Literally 12 miles. Right. So if you think about going from Stearns to Carbondale. I'm with you, they, Israelites. I'm... Yeah. They wandered. And it was a mountain. They didn't even have to go over and around. I mean, there was like Israel and then a mountain and then Carbondale. <laughs> Not like I'm equating Carbondale. No, we don't want to go to Carbondale. No, to go to Carbondale. I'm, I'm sorry. Carbondale is not the promised land. Let's just Carbondale. say that. It is not. We it's not. Away. But so there's there's the there's Israel, a mountain, the promised land, and all they had to do was scoot around that mountain and be in the promised land. Yeah. But somehow they managed to make it a 40 year trip because they just weren't mopping what God was dropping. So <laughs> mopping what God was dropping, right? Picking up what I'm laying down, right? Smelling, Smelling what, what you're stepping in. in. Uh -huh. <laughs> exactly. So, you know, when we bull up like that, like you did with your counselor and we're not listening and we're assuming what God is thinking about us because we do that too with God, not just people. Oh, we yeah. assume what God is thinking about us. Yeah. Like <laughs> right now, Lord, help yeah. these people. Yeah. That's the truth. Yeah. Sweet Lord, they're on the first side of the mountain and they're gonna see it forty more times before. But yeah <laughs> before we learn. But literally, but you know, it's just like he God's thinking about you. You are strong and you are a warrior and you're thinking Watch me be a witch, and I'm eating the candy bars, and God thinks that I'm a sinner, and God thinks that I'm weak, and God thinks yeah. that I'm stubborn, and God thinks this and that, and God thinks that you are strong, and God thinks that you're a warrior, right? And you're missing it. And for people, especially Christians, 
um, to spew out what they think God is thinking onto other people. Right. Yeah. That's all dangerous. All the other neighbors that we have, every single one of them. I will say God is love. Period. Yeah. God is love. And he doesn't need your help to yeah. point fingers. He doesn't need anybody. Um, gosh, just hurting the situation. My God, some of these people, you can look in their eyes and just be like, man, that's pain. Some of them do it in the name of Christianity. Oh, gosh, I got, oh, that's bad chills I got there, Jim. It's not okay for us to get so churchy and religious about anybody else's situation. You don't know what they've been through. You don't know how they've been treated. Um, look at all the disciples, you know, like they all have this amazing backstory and they still like, they were still allowed in the boat. They were still allowed at that table. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, that we're allowed at the table. Man, we get to sit and just be with the cool crowd. Right. <clears throat> and While Jesus was sitting at the table knowing what was going to happen with Peter and right? told the group what was going to happen without naming who's doing it, knowing what's coming. God knows what's coming. He knows the choices we have. He knows the choices we can make. Yeah. But he gives us the free will to make them, to go the right path or to make the choice. Right. But he knows because he's he knows on all levels and all planes and all dimensions. But he still allows us at the table, knowing what's coming the very next day. Yes. And he knows that I may very well eat the king size Ghirardelli bar. And he knows that I was trying because I got the super, super high cacao content. Yeah. And I thought, okay, I'm going to use honey and some sea salt on there. So That's I won't bitter. have as much sugar. It's very, very bitter. I'm trying. I'm trying, God. And he's not. It's basically <laughs> salad. <laughs> it's a bean. There ain't no sugar in there. It's, yeah. So I really feel like I equate it to... Um, the, what did it say? Consecrate. It means to be made holy. It means to prepare, to get ready to go. And I was thinking about how my kids will say, you know, I'll say, we're leaving in 30 minutes. Are you ready to go? We're ready. Are you ready to go? We're leaving in five minutes. You ready? I'm ready. All right, let's go. I'm out the door. They don't have their shoes on. <laughs> they don't have their teeth brushed. Brush your teeth. They don't have their hair combed. Um, they're not in any way ready to go. So we can sit here and say, I'm ready, God. Put yeah. me in, coach. Yeah. I'm ready. Yeah. I'm, I'm ready. Let's go. Let's go. And he's going, okay, but, but. Are you? <laughs> right? <laughs> And so I really, um, this, <laughs> and I love, I love just like the Israelites. Um, I really, I was reading in my Bible once and once, more than once. <laughs> <laughs> Done it a couple of times. And um, I was reading and I went, oh, they're so stupid. The sheep, the Israelites, um, everybody, anybody who's dumb in the Bible and God, <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute. That's, That's me. me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the dummy. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, it's, a, it's armchair quarterback. Oh, for it's sure. armchair quarterback in the Bible. So we're sitting there going, you know, like when you watch the game shows on TV and you think, how do you not know the answer to that? Because when put in the fire, we lose I, what we know, which absolutely. is why Satan wants to put us in the fire all the time. Yeah. Because we lose what we know. Right. So that's why we have to guard our heart with all diligence for out of it springs the issues of life. And we have to put the word in our heart and hide it because so true. when we get derailed or when you're put in a situation that's difficult, 
the first go-to is to forget what you know. Right. And yeah. just panic. Yeah, exactly. I, um, um, John Barrett, I just read part of his blog this morning, and he was talking about um, if you want to be strong, who do you surround yourself with? You know, the old um, cliche, you know, you are the five people that you surround yourself with. Mm -hmm. And um, I can't deal, I can't deal with whining. I don't do, I don't do belly aching. I don't do none of that. Like I can't, I can't. And so I surround myself with people who are like, okay, let's go. Noah Lyles is, I forget, he, he won gold. He's diagnosed with severe asthma, and then he won a bronze when he had COVID. Like, how's that? <laughs> he literally found out he had COVID, and he's like, forget this. I'm going. You know, I'm at the Olympics. Yeah. What's going to stop me? And he gets bronze. <laughs> and then you have to expect, because I saw this, I saw this, my own personal eyeballs saw this, and was blown away. I thought to myself... When I saw this, he had COVID. Okay, people, we're at the point in life. It's a cold. Let's go. Right. I mean, it can well, be. Well, there's no more flu anymore. Right. Because it's all COVID. Right. So um, he found out he had COVID, ran, did his thing, got the bronze. And all of these people in the comments are like, how dare you? You're running <laughs> in the out of doors with other runners spewing COVID on all these other people and making them sick. And it's like, you can't, you can't even congratulate someone because you're so busy pointing fingers oh, and so all true. of you are also the idiots. Yeah. We're all the idiots. Yeah. And then people can't congratulate other people. Right. They have to constantly tear them down. It's true. And it's so much easier to do from your phone. Oh, absolutely. You know, mm -hmm. and or text messages. Right. And how do you, let's just throw this out there. I'm just going to throw this out there. How do you determine what is in someone else's mind? If you, first of all, you can't, but if you don't have a face-to-face -face conversation with them, mm -hmm. if your only conversation with them is through text, how do you know what they're thinking? Right. You don't. There's no And it doesn't tone. matter There's what no... that counselor tells you that they're thinking. That still doesn't mean that's what they're thinking. Right. There's no, um, and that's why I say, you know, it's job security for me because as a speech pathologist, there, there's no intonation. There's no prosody. You're not reading the nonverbals. You're not able to, um, you're not able to figure out what they meant by that a lot of times. And if I was just like, I don't care if I texted that to you. Right. You can take it. Wow. How many different ways? How rude. <laughs> it depends on, I don't care. Right. Yeah, and it depends on the voice that the reader reads it in. Right. It's not the person Absolutely. that texts it. I mean, there's yes. so many times that I've texted something that I meant as uplifting and positive, and someone turns around and goes, how can you be so negative? How can, and I'm just like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, where did that even come from? I don't care. So, yeah, I mean, yeah. I don't care. I don't care. So, you know, yeah, I think that reading of the faces is very important. In it's so true. And truly, I work with kids, adults, traumatic brain injury, all of these things. And I used to work with just a very small subset of these people who had certain diagnoses, um, who had trouble reading those faces and that body language and what it means when I'm going, <clears throat> <clears throat> that kind of thing. No, there's so many who don't know what that means anymore because they're not having those interactions. They're not reading people's faces. They don't know what any of that means. Now we've got an entire generation of kids that were either born or in school that have missed learning what those yeah. things mean during those very yeah. important years that those synapses fire and connect and teach people what it means to read someone else's face. So now we've got about a 10 year COVID didn't last that long, but you've got birth to about right. third grade. Yeah, absolutely. That they missed all of that. Yep. They didn't they didn't learn it. Yeah. 
And everybody wants to be so virtual on everything. Like, I'm not against it, but it's definitely not my favorite. Yeah, not at all. it's that whole interaction of being able to, like, I mean, in my current job, I mean, I train people. Yeah. And so if I'm face-to-face with them, I can see the true struggles or not. Yeah. Virtual, if they have a camera, great. Half the time they don't want to turn a camera on. I get right. it. Neither do I. But I mean, at least having a camera on, I can at least see some kind of reaction. Yeah. The majority don't ever want to turn them on, you know, because, well, they have the, the option to not have to. Well, and so then you go by the voice and then yes. you're like, you know, I'm talking to a blank screen and I can't see your face and it just, you, you know, it sucks. It. I hate that communication. Now think about court. When we do Zoom court, heavens. First of all, you know, we're not dealing with the upper echelon of society to begin with. And then you put them on Zoom court. They don't, okay, you can't eat your chips. You can't smoke cigarettes. You're still in court. We've had to actually, the judges have actually had to say, ma'am, I'm going to need you to sit up out of your bed to attend court today. I mean, how crazy is that, right? Yeah. Like you just have to... You know, or, I mean, again, and I get it, people show up in their PJs. Like, if I'm working from home, I'm still going to look pretty good up here. Yeah. Because <laughs> exactly. I need to. But I may have some comfy pants on. Pajama pants on. <laughs> you know. But, Joy I mean, at least fun. be presentable. I mean, you're still you're still having to report to work. You're still having to report to whatever. So, you take that and, you, and I understand yeah. there are people that are homebound that can't get out to church. Right. So, I think it's beautiful. That we have video mm-hmm. capabilities Absolutely. for those people. Oh, and I am the world's worst because of some of my own personal battles with Satan and things that he roads he tries to take me down. I would much rather sit home with my coffee and my jammies and watch church. Absolutely. But guess what? It is not the same as being there. Nope. It is not, not the same. Number one, you're not seeing people. You're, you're not seeing you're people. seeing your dogs, which you love. Right. All great and fine and dandy. But when you're, when you're out in public and seeing people, you are either going to... Touch somebody one way or the other. You speak yeah. to them, whatever. They needed that. Even or in my mindset. Just like the people, the, oh, yeah. the turds that lay down in bed and won't sit up. Right. Even on the edge of the bed to go to court. <laughs> Your thoughts of, de- of decorum and behavior are completely different. Yeah. You know, I'm trying not to be distracted while I'm sitting in church. I'm trying not to... Um, piddle around in my purse. I'm trying to get my mom out of her purse most of the time. <laughs> Except for when she brings out the red Love candies because those are good. <laughs> yeah. But but so she's super distracting to sit next to. And especially about eleven thirty she starts going, Why do you want to eat today? <laughs> yeah. It's a trip. Oh, so, so but you know, when you think about it, if you're watching at home, you're easily distracted oh, by absolutely. things that you're thinking you're in. But when you're in church, you're oh, trying yeah. to get into worship. You're trying to put your mind. If we can't focus on being in the building, how can we focus on being in the throne room? Right? Oh, how can we do Absolutely. that? Absolutely. Absolutely. That's so true. And so, it, yeah. sorry, go ahead. No, you're fine. I mean, it just, you know, and that goes back to social media to where kind of a little off topic, but it can be so good. Like to me, this yeah. is a good platform. We are trying to, it's good for us. And hopefully we're reaching others, but then it's also, it can suck you in. Just like you said a while ago, if I get on here, I'm going to get on Facebook. And the next thing you know, I'm going to forget what I'm doing. And we're all guilty of doing it. It ticks me off. Yeah, but absolutely. I mean, virtual is great, but it's also just. As I'm trying to watch the comments. (laughs) Well, but I mean, and I get it, but I mean, that's, you know, we're trying to see the interaction. Right. But I mean, if I'm sitting in a movie, movie, (laughs) in a meeting, you know, virtually, I'm easily distracted doing something. And mm-hmm. in my age now, I I am not the multitasker I used to be. Like, if you want me to really listen, I have got to listen. Do not, I can't let anything else disrupt me. Yeah. I mean, it happens, but it, that's why mm-hmm. I don't like virtual. Because if I'm not in the room with those people, it's okay. just not the same. Right. Just so tell same. us this. You've had many things, and I, and I don't mean this as a slam. I mean this as, as a good thing. Not that you went through it all, but it's because I'm going to take 30 minutes to try to talk my back talk sure, my way out of that. Back. I know. Chicken so we, yeah, they're bent. It's a bent. So I don't know what that even means. <laughs> everything comes out the same hole, so they don't call it a butt. It's a bent. <laughs> so 
Well, guess what? Chicken butt is a lie. Yes, it's guess guess what? Chicken, chicken mint. mint. <laughs> yeah. Can I have a mint? Chicken mint. <laughs> We're gonna add chicken mint. So <laughs> when yeah. <laughs> So whenever you have found yourself at various stages in your life distracted from what, from where God wants you, how do you get back to where you need to be? Sometimes God will pick you up and place you back there on your path. And that's never a comfortable path. That's never a comfortable (laughs) way for it to happen. But so when you become distracted, how do you refocus on what God wants you to focus on? Truly, um, I, I have to come up with routines and everything in me hates and loves routines. <laughs> I mean, it's ridiculous. Like, and call it ADHD, call it scatterbrain, call it whatever you want. I don't care. Um, I have to come up with those routines because, and I really do think it's more ADHD, right? <laughs> because it's every morning is new, right. you know, yeah. new mercies every morning takes on a whole different meaning for ADHD. We have to recreate <laughs> the wheel. Mm-hmm. We have to recreate the wheel every single day. Yeah. Like, um, I have to, I probably have one in here. Um, I have to go back to my routine one of the things that I did was um, was put a Bible in every room. So if I sit down, I am near a Bible, guaranteed. Every single, it doesn't matter where I sit, there's a Bible. And, and one of my quirks, and OCD, <laughs> diagnosis, Sarah, ADHD and OCD, that's not official. Um, I don't allow anything on top of my Bible. Yeah. And God, (laughs) thank God we go way back. Um, (laughs) But it was years ago that um, I was setting stuff and I'm kind of, you see, maybe you can, hopefully you can't see my. (laughs) She hit her stash. My pile stuff. I I don't, I don't make decisions very well. And so I don't know what I'm going to need. So I just bring it all in there. I I do the same way with packing. The same thing. Just bring the whole thing. I'll decide later. Um, But I, I couldn't, it's kind of out of sight, out of mind. Right. So if I have all of this junk stacked up on my Bible, then I, I don't think about it. And so I made a rule, and, and to this day, <laughs> I cannot, it's a rule for myself. I'm not saying, I'm not condemning anybody. Right. You can stack stuff on your Bible. It doesn't bother me. <laughs> it's just your thought process. This it's is me. what I have to do. Exactly. Mm-hmm. That's one of the things that um, I've done for years. I don't allow anything, especially a remote. Boy, if there's a remote on oh, top yeah. of my Bible, you should see me wing it. <laughs> I, uh, and the kids all do. The kids don't even, they don't even know about it. I I mean, they don't, I, because it's just me, you know, right. You don't want to, if God tells you not to wear a certain color watch band, that's, that's your deal. If God tells you not to wear Daisy Dukes, that's your deal. (laughs) I don't care. This is me and God. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day of every single day, he's who I care about. It's an audience of one. That's it. Yeah. I, I, I've said it before and I'll <laughs> say it again. I do not care what you think of me. That is none of my business. And I finally, um, finally got hold of that. And I even looked at my husband and said, Hey, what? He embarrasses pretty easily. Good to know. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just taking. Mr. Ryan. But he is very much, we're like Dharma and Greg. Okay? Remember <laughs> Dharma and Greg? Yeah, absolutely. Dharma. I love me some Dharma. Dharma. That's what I've said before. I'm a Christian Dharma. And that was my, that was my nickname. But there's still people that call me Dharma. That's funny. But, um, but that's him. Like, he is very, this is, this is how you do it. And then until I bring up, you know, eight, 
different other ways to do it. He's like, oh, okay, well, maybe we could do that. You know, yeah. but I finally said, hey, what would I have to do to embarrass you in church? <laughs> and I don't know where I got that idea. It was probably some <laughs> pastor. Sometimes. But, yeah. right. And, and he says, you couldn't embarrass me in church. And I thought, what a bet. Back to the perception. Back to the perception thing. I thought, well, that doesn't make any sense. You know, you wouldn't do the same things that I do. You know, I mean, if, if he raises his hand, then there's, I know there's a God because it doesn't happen very often. And people express themselves in different ways. Absolutely. And that's okay. Some people can sit and sing, stand up, stand up for Jesus, but I cannot. <laughs> Makes me feel funny. But when he said no, he said, there's nothing you can do to embarrass me. It was like, Phew. this weight that the devil himself had tried to put on me, like, don't you do that? Don't you go pray for them? What's he going to think? What's she going to think? Don't you go up there and get prayer? Everybody, the pastor just announced who has whatever problem. <laughs> you know, when people do that, <laughs> the pastors are like, who has a problem with their goiter? And yeah. I'm getting ready to go up. <laughs> oh. I don't really know. Yeah. I mean, the person who can't can use need a healing from syphilis. Right. <laughs> was that um that time when it was just like oh, i have his support and you have to have these certain people's support and know that they've got your back no matter what now is he coming up and signing songs <laughs> worship songs with me no he is not <laughs> but just knowing that that's okay it really set me free yeah and so I go back to these, um, I go back to the routines. Um, here lately, I've been struggling with my phone. Um, it's Bobby. Um, I've been yeah, struggling yeah, yeah. with my phone. <laughs> That's like it's been Bobby, but not. Yeah. Gotcha. Bobby Black. And, yeah. uh, <laughs> God. Rude. Oh, I've been struggling. I'm distracting. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I've been struggling with my phone and I hop it on my phone first thing. And so I have to, have to grab a Bible and this blessed woman, not blessed, blessed from the Methodist church way back yonder down home. She told me her name was Marie. And she said, I don't care, Sarah. I was about 10. She says, I don't care, Sarah. If you open your Bible and you read one word out of it, open your Bible every single day. And so it's those days that I know I am off track when I am on Facebook. I love Facebook. However, if, if we spent a fraction of the time. Oh, yeah. In this book, as opposed to reading what everybody else is doing, then we would be so far along and be accomplishing so much more. And that's one of the things like the canker worms, they have stolen. The devil has stolen a lot from me. And if I don't stay on the track of focusing keeping my eyes on him, that audience of one, I'm going to go right back. Is it going to be worse? Am I still saved? Maybe. Yes, I'm still saved. Maybe it's going to be the most horrible thing I've ever been through. Worse than back when I landed in the hospital a few times. Is it my fault? That's where it gets a little sticky. You know, like, there's no, there's, it's not your fault. You know, you're forgiven and all of this. But there are certain things that I personally have to do. 
I don't, I will not allow anything to be said on top of my Bible. And I am trying my best to eat the dark chocolate and not seven Snickers bars in a week. It's happened. But if we can, if we can recalibrate <laughs> and remember, we are the weak ones. Man, because I don't know how to deal with that situation you got going on. I don't know what to tell you about losing your sister. I don't know why so-and-so is not talking to you. I wish I could fix it. If we can be that person who not just says we're praying. Yeah. But pray. And then when we're reading about how he redeems our life from the pit, how he satisfies us with good, how we're supposed to weep with those who weep, and how he's going to renew our youth like the eagles. Where? What can we not accomplish? What can we not do? And I tell people about my parents. A friend of mine said, my gosh, is there anything that you don't do? You've got your hand in like every pie. There is. And I said, I took my parents at their word when they said, you can do anything you want. And so I've honestly taken that anger because there are so many days when I don't get to be angry. I don't have the energy. Right. I don't. I, it's just not worth it. And believe me, not to say that I don't. I get mad, but then half of my body will go. <laughs> <laughs> It's funny, but you know, laugh, it's funny. So. It's funny. Like, I flail my arms in anger right now, but I can't do this one. <laughs> and we laugh all the time. And, and Ben, God bless you, my baby, because Ben, he'll be behind me, and he is my rock. And he will literally <laughs> stand there like a linebacker. And he's finally learned that sometimes... My foot will go if you kick it. So he's back there going, <laughs> come on, let's go, Gertie. Let's go. Giddy up. <laughs> and, he, <laughs> and he keeps me laughing. And, and truly, like, I don't know where I would be without laughter. So absolutely. Man, when I say I'm having some more shirts made, it's still in the ideas phase. Um, but... It's time to laugh. Yeah. It's time to laugh. It's time uh, It's time to laugh in the enemy's face. Mm -hmm. Man. Righteous there. indignance. Yeah. And so, but when it comes to that anger, I think we have to be, we have to work smarter, not harder. harder. Yeah. Let's quit pointing fingers. Let's quit getting mad at Joe Bob over here. Because he's got a toe ring on. I don't know why Joe has a toe ring on. It it's not your matter. business. It's not my business. Maybe Joe Bob loves toe rings. <laughs> and we can just leave it at that. We don't have to be judging. Or maybe he was trying one people. on and then it just got stuck. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. Maybe Joe he has Bob arthritis. Like a good guy. <laughs> maybe he has arthritis. And bib overalls. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. With a copper toe ring on because he has arthritis in his wonky toe. Right. We or he's know. trying it on for his wife. Yeah. He's measured his toe versus her toe. Yeah. We don't know. And that's okay. Yep. Dave, thank you. Oh, Dave. Dave. <laughs> so, I did, um, did you have a question? No. Go ahead. So I flipped to this um, when you asked me about how I get back on track. <laughs> Ten, minutes. <laughs> Ten minutes later. Yeah. Um, I had just told you about the necklace. Mm -hmm. My my poppy has an eagle as well. Um, and um, I have labeled in here poppy scripture 
And what does it say right here, Miss Cass? <laughs> get wow. your, get your glasses on. Let me get me what if you can see with, with your glasses and the other says, one can't see without them? Uh, let the weak say I am strong. That's yeah. pretty cool, huh? That is pretty cool. Where's that one? Oh, that's in Psalm. Psalm. Can you hold over here? <laughs> 103. Psalm 103. 103. Five. Five. Who satisfies you with good so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. And my note says, let the weak say I am strong. Which goes back to let the weak say I am a warrior. Yeah, yep. Joel. Yeah, good job, Joel. Good job, Poppy. Same. Good job, Sarah. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming back. Absolutely. So good to be here. You're welcome to come anytime. <laughs> I, I will. And I mean, unless we have another speaker, but I if will. you can come, then I, I mean, absolutely. We just have to let them talk. I'm getting too. <laughs> Speaking about speakers, um, <laughs> next week and tune in. We've got Rachel Clark. Yes, yes. I'm excited in. to meet I her. I don't think I have. I don't think I've met her in person. You didn't know her from church? Guess not. Okay. Unless I do. I'm sorry, Rachel. <laughs> she. I, I don't may. remember. Huh? Yeah. I may, but I. Since you mentioned she was going to be on, um, we have. Uh, we haven't what's the word collaborated or anything, but right. we did the Facebook thing mm -hmm. and now we are besties. I'm very excited to hear what she has to say because I'm her mountain, her former mountain and a mountain that I'm um, walking around right now. Some, not her entire mountain, but she's got a huge testimony and I am so ready to hear about how God delivered her from depression and anxiety yes yeah so that's really yes cool. that's cool because it's such a pit satan traps us there and keeps us there and it's such a pit so i'm excited to hear about what Me god's too. done with her she's she's Me an amazing too. person and she's so uplifting and fun and yeah i'm really excited to have her on and then the following week um which i don't even know what today is the 10th so the 17th is rachel lucas clark that's rachel lucas clark on facebook it's rachel clark and then sorry dion and then um then the next weekend, which would be the whatever date that turns out to be, mm -hmm. 20 something. That's August math. 23rd. 23rd, okay. That's math. <laughs> that is our, um, we haven't decided if we're doing on, well, we haven't discussed it with her. Um, Samantha Dahmer, um, owner, co owner of the patch. She's such a fabulous I love person. Her. I know. And one of her little boys' name is Church, and I think that is such he's, a cool name. He's one of my students. Is he really? That's side. awesome. Yay. Yes. Yeah. At Ambleside. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. He's the best. So, yeah, her family's awesome. Her husband's awesome. They have the greatest place out there, the patch. It's out on Pittsburgh Road, and it is so much fun to go out there. They have goats and chickens, <laughs> and they do. Um, I don't know think, if they fade or not. I don't know. Yeah, Samantha, let us know if they fade. I'm sure you ask her. But they are, I'll it is such away. a fun place for kids. They have, <laughs> yeah, if I'm just down there buzzing the buzzer. But they're getting ready to have their mom days, and then they'll have pumpkin days, and then they have Christmas tree sales, and in the spring they have fern sales, and they, oh, ferns. Yeah. oh, ferns are good. No, they're not. <laughs> I don't do well with plants, period, so. Yeah, I do much better Ferns. with pumpkins that you said this is my firm face. <laughs> this is my firm face. Ew. So we got some great stuff <laughs> coming up. We're going to be working on getting some other speakers. And then, you know, we might just do some Bible trivia again. Yeah. So don't miss us. Um, we are going to try, I'm sure, to hammer down an actual time that we go live. Yeah. But a lot of it depends on people's availability and stuff. So we're yeah. just trying to work with that. But again, the bonus, if you can't catch live, you can always catch it later. So yes. And again, even if you're catching it later, share. I don't even it. know what time we started today, but it's know. 12 o'clock. Yeah. And so obviously we tend to go over too. And then that it's way you can on. just, you know, yes, Erica. watch as you want, when you want, how you want, take a break. Right. Be like, okay, this is a little too much, but yet you can't get enough of us. Yeah. So you just have to come back and join. Right. Yeah. Um, another thing I want to add, um, I don't know if you saw the email from Angie Watts. About the Engage conference, one yes. of conferences coming up October 12th. Um, 
off the top of my head, I can't remember, but we're meeting monthly yes. at this point in time. Um, and so I apologize and I, I can post it. Um, she wants us to bring a friend. Yeah. <gasps> yeah. So, so if you want yeah. you, if you want anybody, honestly. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> we're all with Rebecca. Yeah. I do. Rude. <laughs> yes. So, um, I'll find out what it is monthly, but she would love... I think it's like the last Monday I, or Tuesday. I feel like it, yeah. I'm not... Yeah. I'll have to just it's go... What, I, some work. I don't... It's I know. Like do. And now you gotta... Now you gotta bend down and pick your hands up. Great. Showing us? Showing what God gave me? Okay. Showing what God gave me. And you're right, Erica. Um... God knows that we're strong even when we don't feel strong. We can, Absolutely. We can say that we're strong. He <laughs> says, let the weak say they are strong. Let the poor say they are rich. So just walk through the grocery store telling yourself you're rich. Tight hands are hard. And short sleeve shirts. We can do Way hard better than a long sleeve shirt. Sleeve. <laughs> <laughs> this is important. I don't know what you're high saying. High five, high five. Here, hold that. Just show everything. Here you oh, go. Hold the shirt. Now just say like, <laughs> <"Hey, I'm laughs> <peace." laughs> Tiny hands are the best. They are. But so yeah, so we'll find that information for the um, women's conference. Um, I, I know we've had a lot of people hit up, hit me up even personally about it. So I'm excited. Hoping that we can bring in a bunch of people. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, uh, meeting monthly. So there's only two more months because here we are. August is almost halfway over. Um, yeah. And October 12th is the, the women's conference. And so. if you would like to be a part of the women's prayer group, you do not have to be a part of Cornerstone Church. I am Absolutely. not a, part, yeah. a no. part of Cornerstone. She is not no. a part of Cornerstone. We've been asked by Angie Watts, who is amazing, who has a heart for women in Southern Illinois, not just in her church. For lots of women to come together and pray for this mm -hmm. outreach ministry that is not just for Cornerstone. We want all women. To, it, the, the theme is called Better Together. And so we don't have to. We can drop the facade of thinking that you have to belong right. to a certain church, a certain right. denomination, a certain uh, echelon of people, a certain class. You don't have to carry it to a certain purse. <laughs> There are echelons. I love that you, I love that you used the word echelon <laughs> twice. I did? Twice. <laughs> yeah, I remember the first time. I was so excited. <laughs> That's so funny. But join us. So uh, oh. Cassie's going to put the information on there because yes. she's our tech girl and our hashtag person. <laughs> I've been trying to write my hashtags. And maybe we can even have Angie come maybe the, the weekend after... We go to the patch. No, okay, she'll be able to come on and talk. So I'll talk to her about yeah, that. Yeah, that sounds good. So okay, all right. Well, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you again for coming. Yes, thank you. <laughs> she will definitely be back. Yes, she's signing. Um, thank you. It's tiny hands. <laughs> yes, I'm working on signing. We are all hands. gonna have to have our own tiny hands because <laughs> that's the best. She's so mine. anyway, <laughs> have a great day. Enjoy the rest of your day, weekend. Um, be kind. It's free. It's easy. Yes. So. Thank you again for the continued support. We, we were like 808 this morning. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. 808. That's awesome. 808. And Joey's journey yes. video has been viewed now around 7,000 times. Really? Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, it's still being looked at. So yeah. That is awesome. So Constant prayer for Joey. Yes. Thank you. Absolutely. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Peace out. Bye. 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 <laughs>